Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a blessed day in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, everybody has their view about the Antichrist. Some think it's President Trump now. Some others think it's Obama. Somebody might think a woman Antichrist would be Hillary Clinton. Who knows? Everybody has their own idea. But I'll tell you one thing. No matter what you believe, it's not going to damn your soul. Like some of these people posting... Oh, if you don't believe the way I do, you're going to hell. You're taken away from the book of Revelation. You're taken away from the word of God because you don't interpret it the way I do. Well, that is so stupid. I really believe you need psychological help. The only way you can take away from the word of God, if you were a scribe and writing out a new Bible and taking and throwing out portions of the scripture, that's the way. The interpretation of scripture does not damn your soul unless it has to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you interpret that wrong, then that could damn your soul, but not these other interpretations you might have, like end-time prophecy. Come on, get with it. It's he that believeth not on Jesus Christ is damned. If you need Jesus Christ today, I would suggest you trust in the one who died for you on the cross, died for your sins. He was buried. In three days he arose from the dead. Well, I want to get into Korah, the teaching of Korah. I believe he might be the one principal antichrist. What did I say principal? Because there are many antichrists. It, let, me, let me show you something in Daniel that I recently seen. Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Well, now, let me ask you the question. Who takes away the daily sacrifice? They go, the Antichrist does. Okay. Who sets up the abomination to make it desolate? Well, it's the Antichrist. All right. Well, now I want to show you another verse. It'll blow your mind. Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and they take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. It's they. It's not just one person. It's they. It's a group of people unified in their mind and their thought. Like the Bible says, the beast shall have seven heads. Uh, but like I said, I believe there's a principal antichrist, the one that sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That is one principle, the main, the main antichrist. I believe there is one. But who is the main Antichrist? Some say, oh, it's President Trump. He's the one. I know he's the one. Or Obama, he's the one. Or no, it's Hillary. Hillary Clinton, she is the one. She's a she Antichrist. Well, they all may be Antichrist. I do not know. But I do know that there are many Antichrists, and a lot of these scriptures might fit any particular one. Well, like the Bible says in Revelation that the beast has many heads, seven heads. We later find that seven heads are the seven hills. And some people think, well, that those are the hills of the Vatican. I believe it's the hills of Jerusalem. I'm starting to believe that the regions of the hills will have the embassies. I'm starting to believe that. I believe it will end up about seven major embassies in Jerusalem. And, of course, we find out that there's ten leaders, ten kings. Some have not received their kingdom as yet, the Bible said. So you got to figure that out. But I believe there are leaders put their embassies in Jerusalem. And guess what? They all confirm the covenant. They give the strength of their country backing Israel. See how that works? They all confirm the covenants. Well, now I want to talk about Korah being the principal Antichrist. I could be far off on this, but then again, I could be right on. It's hard to say. It talks about the beast in chapter 17, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. It says ascend. He'll come out of the bottomless pit. And then reread Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. It says it again. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. So there you go. You got chapter 17 and you got the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. What does that mean? 
Some say that it might mean that when the beast has the mortal head, when he comes back alive. But before that, he goes into hell, and then he ascends out of hell. I don't know. I believe that it's appointed under man once to die, and after that, the judgment. There is no coming back once you die. At least that's the way I believe it. Now let's get to the fifth angel. In chapter 9, it speaks about when the bottomless pit is opened. You can't ascend out of something unless there's a door that's been opened. Hell is sealed, and there's no getting out of hell. Once you're there, you perish from the living, but you're still alive, conscious in hell, suffering from the smoke and the eternal fires. And so we see in chapter 9, Revelation, that the fifth angel sounded, and he sounds in the seventh seal. And the Bible says, I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the bottomless pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now notice that. These creatures are physical and they're alive. They're able, they're not just ghost-like creatures. They're able to sting. They're able to hurt like scorpions. So they're living in hell. Now are they propagating in hell? Some die, some live, and they keep going like that. I do not know. I don't know too much about hell and its preservation of the damned. But I know that those in hell will come forth someday under judgment. And this is a holding tank. But when that door is open, we see living creatures coming out. Now let's go to Korah. He was that rebellious guy in Numbers. He wanted to usurp the authority of of Moses, and he wanted more of a part. Moses got very upset, we find in Scripture. And uh, it got so bad that it said, he put it in the hands of God. And he said to the Lord, he said, But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick, alive in the pit. Then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder, that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth. This is in Numbers chapter 16, verse 32 now. And swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. And the Bible goes on to say in verse 33, that they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Now, like I said, they perished, but I believe they and everything went down into the pit. But did they die? That's the question. Did Korah really die, or is he alive? Moses said, a new thing, to make a new thing. An old thing would be that when the earth opened their mouth and swallowed them up, they would die, and their body would leave their spirit, or their soul would go down into hell. That would be an old way of doing it. But they go down into the pit of hell alive. And that's what it says, went down alive into the pit. That would be a different, that would be a new thing, wouldn't it? See what I'm getting at? Somebody came out of hell, and it says the beast... The beast of revelation ascends out of the pit. The beast. Now, I believe there are many beasts. Actually, it even says that. Another beast. The the Antichrist Messiah. He's another beast. But I believe there are many beasts because the beast has many heads. But I believe this, Korah, seems to me to be the principal Antichrist that I believe will sit in the temple of God. He's He's that rebellious. He'll sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, that the Bible says. Well, I hope I gave you something to think about today. I could be totally wrong, and I could be totally right. But it's something we must consider when you think of the verse. He ascends out of the bottomless pit. But this is Larry Zorro. Take care. God bless. See you later. Bye.